And now, Chapter 2, Killing the Keshi Demon and Vyomasura. After being instructed by Kamsa, the demon Keshi assumed the form of a terrible horse. He entered the area of Vrindavan, his great mane flying and his hooves digging up the earth. He began to whinny and terrify the whole world. Krishna saw that the demon was terrifying all the residents of Vrindavan with his whinnying and his tail wheeling in the sky like a big cloud. Krishna could understand that the horse was challenging him to fight. The Lord accepted his challenge and stood before the Keshi demon. As he called him to fight, the horse began to proceed towards Krishna, making a horrible sound like a roaring lion. Keshi rushed towards the Lord with great speed and tried to trample him with his legs, which were strong, forceful, and as hard as stone. Krishna, however, immediately caught hold of his legs and thus baffled him. Being somewhat angry, Krishna began to move around the horse dexterously. After a few rounds, he threw him a hundred yards away, just as Garuda throws a big snake. Thrown by Krishna, the horse immediately passed out. But after a little while, he regained consciousness and with great anger and force rushed toward Krishna again, this time with his mouth open. As soon as Keshi reached him, Krishna pushed his left hand within the horse's mouth. The horse felt great pain because the hand of Krishna felt to him like a hot iron rod. Immediately his teeth fell out. Krishna's hand within the mouth of the horse at once began to inflate and Keshi's throat choked up. As the great horse began to suffocate, perspiration appeared on his body and he began to throw his legs hither and thither. As his last breath came, his eyeballs bulged in their sockets and he passed stool and urine simultaneously. Thus the vital force of his life expired. When the horse was dead, his mouth became loose, and Krishna could extract his hand without difficulty. He did not feel any surprise that the Keshi demon was killed so easily, but the demigods were amazed, and out of their great appreciation, they offered Krishna greetings by showering flowers. After this incident, Narad Muni, the greatest of all devotees, came to see Krishna in a solitary place and began to talk with him. My dear Lord, he said, you are the unlimited super soul, the supreme controller of all mystic powers, the Lord of the whole universe, the all-pervading personality of Godhead. You are the resting place of the cosmic manifestation the master of all the devotees, and the Lord of everyone. My dear Lord, as the super-soul of all living entities, you remain concealed within their hearts, exactly as fire remains concealed in every piece of fuel. You are the witness of all the activities of the living entities, and you are the supreme controller within their hearts. You are self-sufficient, before the creation, you existed, and by your energy, you have created the whole material universe. According to your perfect plan, this material world is created by the interaction of the modes of nature, and by you it is maintained and annihilated. Although you are unaffected by all these activities, you are the supreme controller eternally. My dear Lord, you have advented yourself on the surface of this world just to kill all the so-called kings who are actually demons. 
These hobgoblins are cheating people in the dress of the princely order. You have advented yourself to fulfill your own statement that you come within this material world just to protect the principles of religion and annihilate unwarranted miscreants. My dear Lord, I am therefore sure that the day after tomorrow I shall see demons like Chanura, Mushtik, and other wrestlers and elephants, as well as Kamsa himself, killed by you. And I shall see this with my own eyes. After this, I hope I shall be able to see the killing of other demons like Shanka, Yavan, Mura, and Narakasura. I shall also see how you take away the Parijat flower from the kingdom of heaven and how you defeat the king of heaven himself. My dear Lord, Narad Muni continued, I shall be able to see how you marry princesses, the daughters of chivalrous kings, by paying the price of kshatriya strength. Whenever a kshatriya wants to marry a very beautiful and qualified princess of a great king, he must fight his competitors and emerge victorious. Then he is given the hand of the princess in charity. I shall also see how you save King Riga from a hellish condition, said Narad Muni. This you shall enact in Dvorka. I shall also be able to see how you get your wife and the Shyamantaka jewel, and how you save the son of a Brahmin from death after he has already been transferred to another planet. After this, I will be able to see you kill the Pondrak demon and burn to ashes the kingdom of Kashi. I will see how you kill the king of Chedi and Dantavakra in great fights on behalf of Maharaj Yudhishthir. Besides all this, it will be possible for me to see many other chivalrous activities while you remain in Dvorka. And all these activities, performed by your grace, will be sung by great poets for all time. And at the battle of Kurukshetra, you will take part as the chariot driver of your friend Arjun, and as the invincible death incarnation, eternal time, you will vanquish all belligerents assembled there. I shall see a large number of military forces killed on that battlefield. My Lord, let me offer my respectful obeisances unto your lotus feet. You are situated completely in the transcendental position, in perfect knowledge and bliss. You are complete in yourself and are beyond all desires. By exhibiting your internal potency, you have set up the influence of Maya. Your unlimited potency cannot even be measured by anyone. My dear Lord, you are the supreme controller. You are under your own internal potency, and it is simply vain to think that you are dependent on any of your creations. You have taken birth in the Yadu dynasty or the Vrishni dynasty. Your advent on the surface of the earth, in your original form of eternal blissful knowledge, is your own pastime. You are not dependent on anything but yourself. Therefore I offer my respectful obeisances unto your lotus feet. Narad Muni wanted to impress upon people in general that Krishna is fully independent. His activities, such as his appearance in the family of Yadu, or his friendship with Arjun, do not necessarily oblige him to act to enjoy their results. They are all pastimes, and for him they are all play. But for us they are actual tangible facts. After offering his respectful obeisances to Lord Krishna, Narad Muni took permission and left. After he had killed the Keshi demon, Krishna returned to tending the cows with his friends in the forest, as though nothing had happened. 
Thus Krishna is eternally engaged in his transcendental activities in Vrindavan with his friends, the cowherd boys and gopis. But sometimes he exhibits the extraordinary prowess of the Supreme Personality of Godhead by killing different types of demons. Later that morning, Krishna went to play with his cowherd boyfriends on the top of Govardhan Hill. They were imitating the play of thieves and police. Some of the boys became police constables, and some became thieves, and some took the role of lambs. While they were thus enjoying their childhood pastimes, a demon, known by the name of Vyomasura, the demon who flies in the sky, appeared on the scene. He was the son of another great demon named Maya. These demons can perform wonderful magic. The Omasura took the part of a cowherd boy, playing as thief, and stole many boys who were playing the parts of lambs. One after another he took away almost all the boys and put them in the caves of the mountains and sealed the mouths of the caves with stones. Krishna could understand the trick the demon was playing. Therefore he caught hold of him exactly as a lion catches hold of a lamb. The demon tried to expand himself like a hill to escape arrest, but Krishna did not allow him to get out of his clutches. He was immediately thrown on the ground with great force and killed just as an animal is killed in the slaughterhouse. After killing the Vyom demon, Lord Krishna released all his friends from the caves of the mountain. He was then praised by his friends and by the demigods for these wonderful acts. He again returned to Vrindavan with his cows and friends. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the second volume, second chapter of Krishna, killing the Keshi demon and Vyomasura. <laughs>